What are emus? This video will discuss the physical descriptions, their relationship with humans, and their economic value. Emus are the second tallest living bird after its relative, the ostrich. They live in Australia, where it is the largest native bird. The emu's range covers most of mainland Australia, but the Tasmanian, Kangaroo Island, and King Island subspecies became extinct after the European settlement of Australia in 1788. Emus are soft-feathered, brown, flightless birds with long necks and legs, and can reach up to 1.9 meters in height. Emus can travel great distances, and when necessary, sprint at 30 miles per hour. They forage for a variety of plants and insects, but have been known to go for weeks without eating. They drink infrequently, but taking copious amounts of water when the opportunity arises. Breeding takes place in May and June, and fighting among females for a mate is common. Females can mate several times and lay several clutches of eggs in one season. The male does the incubating. During this process, he hardly eats or drinks and loses a significant amount of weight. The eggs hatch after around eight weeks and the young are nurtured by their fathers. They reach full size after around six months, but can remain as a family unit until the next breeding season. The emu is an important cultural icon of Australia, appearing on the coat of arms and various coins. The bird is common enough for it to be rated as a least concerned species by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Despite this, some local populations are listed as endangered, with subspecies such as the Tasmanian emu going extinct by the 1800s. Threats to their survival include predation of their eggs, road kills, and fragmentation of their habitats. The origin of the common name emu is uncertain, but it is thought to have come from an Arabic word for large bird that was later used by Portuguese explorers to describe the related bird in Australia and New Guinea. Another theory is that it comes from the word emma, which is used in Portuguese to denote a large bird akin to an ostrich or crane. Detailed description. The emu is the second tallest bird in the world, only being exceeded in height by the ostrich. The largest individuals can reach 150 to 190 centimeters in height. Measured from the bill to the tail, emus range in length from 139 to 164 centimeters with males averaging 148.5 centimeters and females about 156.8 centimeters. Emus are the fourth or fifth heaviest bird after a two subspecies of ostrich and two larger species of the cassowary, weighing slightly more on average than the emperor penguin. Adult emus weigh between 18 and 60 kilograms with an average of 31.5 and 37 kilograms in males and females respectively. Females are usually slightly larger than males and are substantially wider across the rump. Emus have three toes on each foot, which is an adaption for running and has been seen in other birds, such as bustards and quails. The ostrich has two toes on each foot. Although flightless, emus have wings. The wing cord measured around 20 centimeters, in each wing having a small claw at the tip. Emus flap their wings when running, perhaps as a means of stabilizing themselves when moving fast. They have long necks and legs and can run at speeds of 48 kilometers an hour due to their highly specialized pelvic limb muscular culture. Their feet have only three toes and a similarly reduced number of bones associated foot muscles. Emus are unique among birds in that their muscles in the back of their lower legs have four bellies instead of the usual three. The pelvic limb muscles of emus contribute a similar portion of the total body mass as do the flight muscles of flying birds. When walking, 
the emu takes strides at about 3.3 feet, but at full gallop, a stride can be as much as 9 feet. Its legs are devoid of feathers, and underneath its feet are thick cushion pads. Like the cassowary, the emu has sharp claws on its toes, which are its major defensive attribute, and it is used in combat to inflict wounds on opponents by kicking. The toe and claw total 6 inches in length. The bill is quite small, measuring about 2.2 inches, and is soft, being adapted for grazing. Emus have good eyesight and hearing, which allows them to detect threats at some distance. The neck of the emu is pale blue and shows through its sparse feathers. They have gray-brown plumage of shaggy appearance. The shaft and tips of feathers are black. Solar radiation is absorbed by the tips, and the inner plumage insulates the skin. This prevents the birds from overheating and allowing them to be active during the heat of the day. A unique feature of the emu feather is the double ratches emerging in a single shaft. Both of the ratches have the same length and the texture is variable. The area near the skin is rather furry, but the more distant ends resemble grass. The sexes are similar in appearance, although the male's penis can become visible when he urinates or defecates. The plumage varies in color due to environmental factors, giving the bird a natural camouflage. Feathers of emus in more arid areas with red soil have a rufous tint, while birds residing in damp conditions are generally darker in hue. The juvenile plumage develops at about three months and is blackish, finely barbed with brown with the head and neck being especially dark. The facial feathers gradually thin to expose bluish skin. The adult plumage develops at about 15 months. The eyes of the emu are protected by membranes. These are translucent secondary eyelids that move horizontally from the inside edge to the eye to the outside edge. They function as visors to protect the eyes from dust that is prevalent in windy, arid regions. Emus have a windpipe pouch, which becomes more prominent during the mating season. At more than 30 centimeters in length, it is quite spacious. It has a thin wall and an opening of about three inches. Relationship with humans. Emus were used as a source of food by Australians and early European settlers. Emus are inquisitive birds and have been known to approach humans if they see unexpected movement of a limb or piece of clothing. In the wild, they may have followed and observed people. Aboriginal Australians used a variety of techniques to catch the birds, including spearing them while they drank at water holes, catching them in nets, and attracting them by imitating their calls or by arousing their curiosity with a ball of feathers and rags dangled from a tree. Another strategy was for the hunter to use a skin as a disguise, and the birds could be lured into camouflage pit traps using rags or imitation calls. Aboriginal Australians only killed emus out of necessity and frowned on anyone who hunted them for any other reason. Every part of the carcass has some use. The fat was harvested for its valuable, multiple-use oil. The bones were shaped into knives and tools. The feathers were used for body adornment, and the tendons substituted for string. The early European settlers killed emus to provide food and use their fat for fueling lamps. They also tried to prevent them from interfering with farming or invading settlements in search of water during droughts. An extreme example of this was the Emu War in Western Australia in 1932. Emus flocked to Chandler, an area during a dry spell, damaging rabbit fencing and devastating crops. An attempt to drive them off was mounted, with the army called in to dispatch with them with machine guns. The emus, however, largely avoided the hunters. Emus are large, powerful birds, and their legs are among the strongest of any animal and powerful enough to tear through metal fencing. The birds are very defensive of their young, and there have been two documented cases of humans being attacked by emus. Economic value. 
The emu was an important source of meat to Aboriginal Australians. They used the fat as bush medicine and rubbed it into their skin. It served as a valuable lubricant, was used to oil wooden tools. Their eggs also foraged as food. An example of how an emu was cooked comes from Central Australia in this story. Emus are around all the time, in green times and dry times. You pluck the feathers out first, then pull out the crop from the stomach, and put in the feathers you pulled out, and then singe it on the fire. You wrap the milk guts that you pulled out into something, such as gum leaves, and then cook them. When you got the fat off, you cut up the meat and cook it on the fire, usually made from river red gum wood. The birds were a fuel and food source for early European settlers and are now farmed in Australia and elsewhere for their meat, oil, and leather. Commercial emu farming started in Western Australia around 1970. The commercial industry in the country is based on stock breed in captivity and all states except Tasmania have licensing requirements to protect wild emus. Outside of Australia, emus are farmed on a large scale in North America, with about 1 million birds in the US, Peru, and China, and to a lesser extent, some other countries. Emus breed well in captivity, and are kept in large open pens to avoid leg and digestive problems that can arise from inactivity. They are typically fed on grain supplemented by grazing and are slaughtered at 15 to 18 months. The Salem District Administration in India advised farmers in 2012 not to invest in the emu business, which was being heavily promoted at the time. Further investigation was needed to assess the profitability of farming the birds in India. In the United States, it was reported in 2013 that many ranchers had left the emu business. It was estimated that the number of growers had dropped from over 5,000 in 1998 to 1 or 2,000 in 2013. The remaining growers increasingly relied on sales of oil for their profit, although leather, eggs, and meat were also sold. Emus are farmed primarily for their meat, leather, feathers, and oil, and 95% of the carcass can be used. Emu meat is a low-fat product, less than 1.5% fat, <clears throat> and is comparable to other lean meats. Most of the usable portions, the best cuts, come from the thigh and thicker muscles of the drum or lower leg, are, like poultry, dark meat. Emu meat is considered, for cooking purposes, by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to be a red meat because of its red color and pH value, approximately that of beef. But for inspection purposes, it is considered to be poultry. Emu fat is rendered to produce oils for cosmetics, dietary supplements, and therapeutic products. There is some evidence that the oil has anti-inflammatory properties, However, there has not yet been extensive tests, and the USDA regards pure emu oil as an unapproved drug and highlighted it in the 2009 article entitled How to Spot a Health Fraud. Nevertheless, the oil has been linked to the easing of gastrointestinal inflammation, and tests on rats have shown that it has a significant effect on treating arthritis and joint pain more so than olive oil or fish oils. It has, been, it has been scientifically shown to improve the rate of wound healing, but the mechanism responsible for this effect is not understood. In 2008, a study has claimed that emu oil has a better antioxidant and anti-inflammatory potential than ostrich oil, and link this to emu oil's higher portion of unsaturated and saturated fatty acids. While there is no scientific study showing that emu oil is effective in humans, it is marketed and promoted as a dietary supplement with a wide variety of claimed health benefits. Commercially marketed emu oil supplements are poorly standardized. 
Emu leather has a distinctive pattern on the surface due to a raised area around the feather follicles in the skin. The leather is used in such items as wallets, handbags, shoes, and other clothes, often in combination with other leathers. The feathers and eggs are used in decorative crafts and arts. In particular, emptied emu eggs have been engraved with portraits and scenes of Australian native animals. Mounted emu eggs and emu egg containers in the form of hundreds of goblets, inkstands, and vases were produced in the second half of the 19th century, all richly embellished with the images of Australian flora. Continued long-standing traditions can be traced back to the European mounted ostrich eggs of the 13th century and Christian symbolism and notations of virginity, fertility, faith, and strength. For a society of proud settlers who sought to bring culture and civilization to the new world, the traditional ostrich egg goblet, freed from its roots in a society dominated by court culture, was creatively made novel in the Australian colonies as forms and new functions were invented to make objects attractive to a new, broader audience. In addition to their use in farming, emus are sometimes kept as pets, though they require adequate space and food in order to live healthily. Emus were formally subjected to regulation in the United Kingdom under the Dangerous Wild Animals Act. However, a review of the act in 2007 led to changes that allowed emus, alongside a number of other animals that were also regulated under this act, to be kept without license, as they were no longer considered to be dangerous.